What's up, everyone? It's our third podcast for Ambition Long Terms. We have done two previous, and we're doing another live one. Last time we had a couple viewers, now we have pretty much more. And this is my favorite podcast, probably, it's going to be for a long time, the All-Star Podcast, where we'll be revealing the All-Star candidates, the players, the heroes, the villains, how we feel about All-Stars, all in this one video. I can't wait. And Mill, if you want to start us off. All right. Um, so I just want to like. Uh, so first, we're just gonna be talking about like how freaking excited we are for this. So our first, like our apps for our first total drama season, Total Drama Island, came out November fourth, two thousand eighteen. That was freaking a year and a half ago, and it just feels like so long. And we've really, you know, developed and gr grown as 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 a group and our total drama is really where all, all all of our you know ambition comes from and our stronger players in my opinion because survivor we have more all-stars but the all-stars we have in total drama are very strong and we have been waiting so long for this and it's finally happening total drama all-stars this week what up and i have just been like freaking going crazy bouncing at us like this is this is happening and uh just want to thank everyone who's ever competed um, in, in Total Drama and not saying you're not getting another opportunity. You know, we'll I'll explain that after this video. Uh, I just, I feel like I sound like a, sec a broken record, but this is the most excited I've ever been in a, for any, any long term before. And Total Drama All-Stars, the best of the best. I cannot freaking explain how much this means to us. So what up your overall view on this? Yeah, all stars. I'm as excited as you. From November 2018 to May 9, 2020, this is crazy. Literally a year and a half we've been waiting for Total Drama All Stars, and we're gonna have the best of the best, the best people that have played in these four previous seasons: Island, Action, World Tour, Revenge of the Island. All of them to come together. The villains, the heroes, battle it out. And we'll see who is the top tier all star, who is maybe the best player in Ambition Long Term History. So, Mill, if you want to start us off with our first person. Alright, guys, the first person we are going to be talking about for Total Drama All Stars, we're going to be starting with the Heroes team. And this might come as maybe a shock. He's more of a, one of our underrated players we've ever had. So the first member of the cast is from Total Drama Action. Sixth place, Bazaar 20. That is right, Bazaar 20 is a hero and he's going to be playing this season. Now, I am so excited to see Bazaar play. Baz is his really integrated like he's he's really shown that how how great of a player he is as of late, you know. And I didn't really know what to think of him in Total Drama Action. He was just kind of there, but like, I knew he was doing a good job. I didn't really know how good he was doing and in what ways he was even doing good. It was like, he was just kind of there. But that's kind of what makes him such a great player, you know? He sold, him solely captain an attack on the killer grips. I mean, those those were a really tight four. And I don't even... And Baz is just such, so keen when it comes to opportunity. And he, um, he, he, him and Soli were a really tight duo. And, you know, Baz knew that Captain and Attack were super tight on that team. And uh, he really put himself into good, uh, good spots. And that's how he was able to barely escape to the merge um, by winning a tiebreaker. And he gets to the merge. And now it was, that's the thing. Total Drama Action was one of our more predictable seasons. I think it's kind of an underrated season, but but the thing is that it's a it's one of those good predictable seasons. Like, you know, the current season Survivor Winners of War is a very predictable season. I think we can all agree. But this was kind of a predictable season, but it was so great. You know, um, it was supposed to be, you know, just Baz solely, Jalen and Captain to the end, right? That was that's what's gonna happen. But uh, where Baz's game went to the end is that Captain revealed to Soli like Baz solely and Jalen are going to go to the final three. Soli, you are going to be the, the fourth place. And so I was like, no way, man. That's where Baz, that captain basically screwed ba uh, Baz. Baz could have easily won the game. He was very under the radar, very strategic, very social 
like a, very socially under the radar, and it was just magnificent for me to watch. And people, like I said, are probably surprised that Baz is even here, um, but because he's an underrated player, not really talked about. But Baz is most definitely an all-star, and I'm very excited to see him get his get a shot and tell drum all stars. Yeah, bizarre twenty. You know, it's funny how he's a hero based off his survivor performance, being like the number one villain. But on TDA, he was a hero. He stuck with his alliance. He was under the radar, making moves with the majority alliance, getting through pre-merge and onto merge, until the captain thing, where captain was like him. Captain Baz and Jalen were going to be a final three, and Sully did not want to be the fourth person and flipped on that lines, probably making the biggest flip in Ambition Long Term's history. And he was one of the people that got out because of that. Baz, you know, his total drama game is under the radar, and I'm excited to see how he's going to play in this time around. He can, if need be get to the end and win he has all the stuff that you need he has the brains he has the bronze he has the social game everything you need to become a winner in this game and i wouldn't be surprised if he has the crown at the end all right so our second hero we are going to be talking about comes from the first season we hosted total drama island and that is none only than arguably the best player in ambition long term history brent1324 Holy heck, this guy is back. I, I can't even believe him staying. Like, Brent competed in our first season, and it's very kind of emotional. Like, like, like he just the story of Brent. Like, he's comp he competed so long ago, played so dominantly. He's always been in the server. He's always been active. Yet he hasn't played since in Total Drama since February 2019. I mean, that's l l almost 15 months, and he is the original winner. And... Brent's game is so unbelievable in TDI. The thing about Brent is that that was his first long term, and somehow he was able to go in there and just steamroll the entire thing. He was on a team uh, on the killer on the uh, killer bass, and there were pretty much three easy easy votes. You know, zombie, Max, and lizard. And Brent just somehow was able to be so open and in your face this season and just control. Every out, every second of the season, like he did, and he wasn't even really targeted until like like a uh, lizard and Max wanted the guy out, but his alliance wasn't even considering writing his name down. Brent was so good socially; he was a manipulator, and this was his first long term. So he gets to the mer and and that's the thing about Brent. The the reason I feel like Brent did so well is because of how loyal he is, how honest he is. He is willing to backstab, but only really if. You're not loyal to him. He's only loyal to the people that are loyal to him. And that's really what helped him get far. And Brent played a very dominant game in TDI. Controlled the entire season. I believe he wasn't left out on a single vote. And, you know, when it comes to why he's a hero, it's like I just said. I mean, he's not... He didn't really play villain like a villain game. He The most villain thing he did, villainous thing he did in Total Drama Island was just help go along with taking out the easy votes on the killer bass. But that... That can't be villainous if he's. He, it was an obvious thing to do. He was just sticking what what he wanted to do because it was the obvious choice. I mean, there were three people wanting to get Brent out, and he was very loyal. That's why he's a hero because he was not a snake, and he would lie to you. Yes, but overall, he really didn't do anything. You know, very villainous, and he was a very loyal, honest, dominant player. So I'm so freaking happy to see Brent back and. Uh, Man, the original seat, the original winner of our total drama is back on the heroes. So glad to see, glad to see him back. Excited to see him play. Yeah, Brent one three two four is back. One of the old, old gen players. Can't believe he's back after a year, and you know, arguably our best player. I've never seen someone be able to be a shepherd in the long term like that. Like you know, there's always things like, oh, this person is sheep. This is a person is sheep. He literally had sheep's. I've never seen someone actually be a shepherd in a long term. This guy was able to control who's getting out. And, you know, the returnees on TDI from Survivor Borneo were able to see that. People like Lizard Animal, people like Max. And those people targeted Brent from the beginning. They saw what he had. And Brent already 
got stuff out. He already got the returnees out, the people who were against him, and that's what Brent does. When people go against him, he's able to get them out. And, you know, he controlled the pre-merge. He got to the merge and was able to maneuver himself through the votes, through with the Screaming Gophers and the uh, Killer Bass. And kept his sheeps along. And, you know, when people started catching up to him, it was people like Stephen Free, who were trying to backstab Brent when they got the chance. And Brent was able to get them out. Every time someone tried to get him out, he got them out. And Brent just completely dominated Total Drama Island. His social game, his social awareness, his, you know, he was good at challenges. He's good just mentally. He's very good player and arguably the best ambition long term player. Cause, and that's why he's able to control the votes. And that's what you need in ambition long terms to be able to win the crown of Total Drama All-Stars. You done? Yep. Brent? All right, if I if I throw like I was I don't know if you guys heard me I was actually about to throw up for some reason like I I feel like I have to puke right now but like I'll hold it in. Um, so <laughs> another kind of underrated player we're gonna be talking about also on the heroes is one of and he's probably got the most interesting story here just because and that may be a little biased and you'll see why the person that is coming back the, the third hero of this season is none other than the fifth placer from Total Drama Action, Captain Crunch5678. Oh my god, I can't, I can't even express, like, how, how? Like, okay, so, I've known Captain since January 2017. I played a, an auto game with him. It's Ryan Jambi's Survivor, and I met him, like, uh, two years before, and, and then he just randomly shows up before the finale of Survivor, the Australian Outback, a year ago, and said, and I was like, oh, yo, what's up, Captain? You'd be pretty good for our next Survivor Africa, right? And he, like a few days later, he just joins the Discord server out of nowhere. And I can proudly say I created the legend of Captain Crunch Five Six Seven Eight. I am this guy's owner. I'm the reason he is here. And I brought him to the community. The first long term he played was Total Drama Action. So it's just so crazy that he's even an all star. And he is a big all star. He is a fantastic player he played a fantastic game in total drama uh, action so captain's game really heavily consisted on his social game i mean he talked he i, I mean the, the flirt the flirting with attack was a little questionable i don't know what that was about <laughs> but uh it was a good strategy i mean it works out right uh and but the biggest thing about captain what captain is really most known for is his duo with Soli. i mean those two were a super duo, arguably the most dominant duo, and ambition. Okay, that's I gotta take that back. Um, but but a, a dominant duo and constantly VCing. I don't even know how. Like, I don't. I, I don't know how 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 long they voice called every day. I mean hours. Like it was just such a great friendship, and it really felt like Captain is slowly growing, were going to the end. I mean he was, he, and that's the thing. Captain never came off as a threat. He never came off somebody that nobody that ever anybody ever wanted to target. I mean, I, I believe he didn't get any vote until his elimination. I could be wrong, but if he, even if he did get any, it wasn't to a big extent. Nobody ever wanted Captain out, and he was just playing such a great under the radar loyal game to Sully. And he makes it to the final. Um, I believe it was six, and Captain could have gone to the end. He could have won the game because of his physical performances at the time, at least. But where Captain's game went wrong, and one of the most iconic moves, bad moves in uh, our history, is when he straight up told Soli, like, Soli, you are number four. You know, I, I don't know how he did it. I wasn't really there for action, because I couldn't get into the game and other reasons. But uh, apparently he, he was like, Soli, um, Baz, Jalen, and I are going to the final three. And that's why Captain got out of the final five. He could have gotten to the end and possibly won. And he, he screwed himself. So, I mean, he still played such a great, under-the-radar, non-threat strategic game and i was proud of him so the reason he's a hero is because he's not he, he lied i mean everyone lies right i mean he lied to baz probably when he voted baz at the um when there were four four killer grips on like ever everyone lies but he was so loyal to Sully and was willing to do anything just because of that friendship and he based on what Sully did at the final at the final five when he took out his a great friend that just made that just made captain the hero heroic position he played a heroic game he played a loyal game and 
he is definitely one of the bigger heroes out here, in my opinion. So I'm so glad to see this guy back. Can't can't wait to see what he brings to the table. Yep, Captain Crunch, one of our, if not the only one-time player in Ambition Long Term, Phoebean All Stars. But uh, yeah, this man, if you want to learn how to be socially there, you gotta take a chapter from Captain Crunch. He was socially great with everyone, even to the point where. You know, I'm not sure what the relationship is, but I'm pretty sure they dated on 12 Drum Action, Captain Crunch <laughs> and Attack Dog. Like, he was just everyone's friend. Everyone liked Captain. Who, you couldn't hate Captain. He was the funny guy. He was, you know, Soli and Hammer are the original, like, voice chatters before we did voice chat long terms. Him and Soli being called time, you know, he is so funny. He is so charismatic. Like, everything about Captain is so good socially, and he was able to get on a majority alliance for the killer grips and you know dominate the pre-merge and get to the merge and dominate the first half and again he was the last casualty of the Sully flip and he did make a bad move in telling Sully about him captain about what Baz and Jalen were saying but again it was still hard for Sully to even betray captain because captain is able to make these social bonds with people to the point where people don't even want to break it. He's funny. You know, you don't want to lose the funny guy. You don't want to lose the guy who's making you laugh, who's making you feel good. And that's what Captain does. He's able to connect with people. And that is why he is a hero. He's He knows how to play strategy. He knows how to play socially. He can physically win challenges. And I can't wait to see him at All-Star because I can see him going far. All right, I almost just threw up again, and gotta, probably after this, after I discuss this next person, I'm gonna go throw up really quickly. Uh, all right, so the fourth person we're going to be talking about is one of our OGs. He played in our very first season, Total Drama Island, and is an ambition long term's favorite and legend. That is right, you probably guessed it by now. The seventh placer from Total Drama Island, the one and only Morbrid, and oh my God, this guy's back, and it's just. It's like seeing myself go out there, you know, like, in in Total Drama Island, I had no idea who the guy was. Like, I never wanted to vote him out. He was so, I knew he was good at the game. Like, I could read him to the point where, like, okay, this guy's got some, he's got, he's stirring something up. He probably wants to take me out. But you never want to vote out Morbid because he always, he was just always there for you. He was a good, he didn't seem like a, like, he seemed like a good player, but just not a good player you want out. A good player who you want to hide behind and you know i i this is kind of a unique guy because like i experienced an entire seat an entire merge two months worth almost of playing with this guy i mean i was on the you know best team ever in ambition long the screaming gophers okay like uh, not not the best but they, they because they lost seven members we walked into that 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 merge with four people and morbid i can proudly say was one of four people to somehow get there and like, and when he gets to the merge, you know, he wasn't targeted at all. He gets to the merge, and he's relegated to the minority because the entire merge was about, you know, let's team up on those killer bats. we got to keep us our, our team strong. And unfortunately, it didn't pay off. We voted out all those people for nothing, and Morbrood was in the minority at the TDI merge. And he was a huge target. I mean, he got targeted at the final 10. Got fi target, or, he was probably going home at the final 10. At the final nine, he was he only was able to survive because somebody quit. Like imagine if Sean didn't walk out of frustration, Morbid could have easily gone home due to physical strength. And then but but he but when he missed when you miss a session, the final seven, there's not much you can do. And uh Morbid was so easy it was so easy to take him out, and he walked away as the third best player of the season, in my opinion. And the so Come on, Morbid's an all-star, like, right? I mean, not only did he play here, he played in Marques as well. If you really want to know, go look at that. I mean, but the reason he's a hero is because he was such... He was there for you. You know, you never wanted to target Morbid. Morbid de never... Like, he, yeah, you could tell he wanted you out if you're a threat. But he also kind of wanted to hide behind you. And he never... Yeah, you could tell he was lying to you sometimes. But he was also being very honest. And it's just... It's, it's just really weird, you know, when you think about that. But he played an honest, loyal game, basically the entire pre-merge and just did whatever the other gophers were doing, vote out, out those inactives, vote out the potential flippers, mix it to the merge, 
plays very sharply to survive, but well, there's, nothing, there's nothing you can do when you, when you miss a session, so uh, they had to take him out, so can't believe the guy's back. For his third season ambition long terms, that is seventh place through from Total Drama Island, the one and only Morbid. Uh, what up? You sound like, um, you know, Alvin and the Chipmunk. <laughs> All right, is it good now? Is my mic good now? Yeah, it is. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah, Morbid. I've never seen it for a lot of these All-Stars. Physical game, strategic game, and social game. He was, for Total Drama Island, he was a part of the losing Gopher tribe. The tribe that lit, or team that literally almost lost every per Premier challenge. This was a bad team, but he was able to get through all of those votes. You know, remember, this is a 22-person cast in TDI, and I believe it ended with four Screaming Gophers at the end. So they had to vote out seven people, and he was able to last every single vote, becoming a four-person team at the end of the pre-merge. And, you know, that was his game, and it comes to a lot of these total drama comps are finding challenges. That's a big part of total drama, and he is one of the best at them, if not the best. I'd say him and Total Lindsay are the best. And, you know, he's going to be great at those. He's going to be socially there he's able to connect to people and you know as far as the cast right now he's probably the best strategic we've announced so far he knows how to play strategy he knows how to get himself from point a to point b and you know the only reason he got out really is he could have won the challenge but he had to be somewhere so he got out not there so who knows maybe he gets farther if he gets to the end i mean if he comes to that one tdi session so he's able to you know, get himself from one way to another and make moves along the way that will benefit his game going forward. And that's why Morbid is such a good player, and I can't wait to see him in Total Drama All Stars. Okay. So the next person we're going to be talking about might come out as a little shocking, and he is also from Total Drama Island. And that is Military Man 2004. I am back for... No, I'm not actually coming back. Um, the person that is coming back is our first three-time player. You've guessed it. Now his name is Nate underscore Jalen, but known as Jalen22003, whatever, just Jalen. Third placer from TDI and also seventh placer from TDA is back for his third total drama season, fourth season overall. And I am... You know, not excited. I, I'm not really that excited because, like, I, I've seen Jalen play so much, but I am at the same time because it's like he's never really played an all star cast. I want to see what the guy can do. And if you want to know why an all he's an all star, you know, a lot of people didn't think he was an all star, but his game, because he, you know, he, he didn't do particularly well in uh, Marquesas due to some circumstances. And in TDA, he lasted two rounds. Everyone forgets about Jalen's TDI game, everyone does, and that's where he became an all star instantly. And, you know, he's, he, Jalen was one of the most unique players of that game. And I, he's basically in the beginning, you know, it was him on the, um, the killer bass team and automatically right out of the gate. Like, we don't know what was going to happen. He probably, he probably was an easy vote for those killer bass if they ever had to take it out. But, uh, he, he's one of the, he's, he was, got volunteered to swap to the, uh, Green and Gophers, and uh, like Morbid, I was able to sit there for an entire month and a half and, and just play with Jalen. You know, Jalen, unlike Morbid, like, Jalen, like, I just can trust, I can trust, and that's the thing, Jalen is so trustworthy. He doesn't lie. Like, you, you can trust anything Jalen says, in TDEI at least. I mean, I never wanted to vote uh, Jalen out. The only reason I ever brought up Jalen's name once was because potentially he had relationships with the other team and that was only if we lost and Jalen was probably going home he, he was probably going to be the fourth place gopher from that pre-merge but uh he was able to barely escape to the merge and it is here where he actually flipped I'm pretty sure and he uh flipped on the screaming gophers after all that talk about let's let's go against those killer bass who are going to freaking decimate all of us and he unlike morbid though he was able to be way more under the radar somehow than more brutal. It's like nobody, like I personally, no offense, like I, I personally forgot Jalen was in the season. That's still under the radar he was. And he, and he, that was his intention. He, ne he never wanted anyone to really 
suspect him. And he, like nobody ever brought up Jalen's name during the merge. Nobody wanted Jalen out. And he was able to get a really tight alliance with Brent. And they were able to make it to the final three where Jalen probably, I mean, Jalen was one of the weaker physical players out of the um, Total Journal Island cast. So he probably would have lost that final challenge anyway. But, uh, what Jalen is most known for from Total Drama Island is definitely the way he got out. I mean, Max, 2000, Max is 2022, you know, he gave him the challenge of saying the entire elimination order from TDI. Like, I couldn't do that right now. I couldn't have done that back in November, like, based on, you know, how much really happened that people forget about. There were a lot of, a lot of votes. I don't think anyone in that cast could have gotten that right. I really don't. And Jalen gets out, and uh, third, he got third place. It would have made a difference, I think. Whoever was going to the end with Jalen was going to win. But, I mean, it's clear Jalen's an all-star because nobody ever wanted to write his name down. And he knew it. And the reason he's a hero is because of how honest he was. I don't know if, like, Jalen, yeah, I mean, he probably lied, like, once or twice. Like, I mean, but he, the thing about TDI is that you never really had to lie. Because it was so obvious where the votes were going every time during the pre-merge. And when she gets to the merge, it's like... Okay, you know, I'm I'm clearly on this side. Like Jalen never nobody ever really wanted to talk to Jalen because he was so hidden. He was in the shadows. And he was just such a heroic it was such a heroic story as he was one of the gophers, like one of the in the worst team in Ambition Long Term's history. And he was able to, as a huge underdog of that season, get to the final three, doing everything he needed to, and uh I'm so excited to see the guy play again. Even though I said I wasn't, but I didn't mean it like that. So, Nate underscore Jalen, back for his fourth ambition long term season. Yeah, Jalen, our first four time player. You know, in TDI, he gets third after the Screaming Golfers were demolished. Four people left. He was one of the people that was able to maneuver himself in the game with his social connections. And yeah, a lot of people do forget about his TDI game, which is probably, I would say, his best game, honestly. He. You know, down seven to four at merge with uh, Gopher going out again. So basically, three to seven at merge, he's able to stay under the radar, just keep going, every vote, every vote. Let other people become targets. Let other people, let the killer bass betray each other, and just go under the radar, go in the radar, stay with the right person who was Brent, and get to the final three. And up to the final three, those are just challenges. So he doesn't have to worry about getting voted out anymore. And you know, that's a test to him because. Maybe at the final three, he doesn't even get voted out. He was able to make sure he was never the vote. And even in pre-merge, he didn't like Pop Dot. Pop Dot didn't like him. And yet those two were the four remaining in the Screaming Gophers. Two of the four remaining in the Screaming Gophers. And then you go to TDA. In TDA, you know, no one's going to... When you come into the game, like Final 7 or Final 8, Final 9... And you're missing like a good all the pre merge. You're not gonna do well. You know he was the Courtney twist in TDA, such as Dean was the Blaney twist in World Tour. And you know he was destined to lose at that point. You're not gonna do good in the game if you come just at merge. And but in TDI he was able to go under the radar and get all the way from 22 people in the cast all the way to third. That is amazing, especially with a losing tribe having to go to all those campfire ceremonies during the pre-merge. Yeah, good luck, Jaden, and I can't wait to see you because I swear people are not going to see him and wait till you see it. He'll be at the final three. <laughs> okay, we have uh, covered five of our heroes. The sixth hero we're going to be talking about is somebody who hasn't been getting a break late lately when it comes to anything. I mean, this guy has been... Just murdered. I mean, he just came off. Yes, this guy, you're probably thinking of who he is. He just came off of the finale of Total Drama Revenge of the Island today. And he's that same day, he's in the All-Stars cast reveal. We are talking about none other than the legendary voice chatter, Ollie is the one. And when Ollie applied, I was so I I was so excited, but I was very curious. I was like, Ollie in this cast, like he's either gonna Everyone's gonna want him out, or he's just gonna be able to get to the end. And the latter, like I, the latter, was the correct choice. I mean, Ollie's game was an all-star game from the start. Like what, what up and I both knew that this guy's gonna, this guy's gonna do well. This guy's gonna not be seen. 
and that's the thing. Ollie was always considered as a target during the like till like maybe the final five ish, but nobody ever wanted him out because that's how under the radar he wasn't. He was. He wasn't even under the radar. It's just what he was able to sharply integrated into those position integrate himself into those positions where why would you vote Ollie out? And during the pre-merge, you know, he was on that dominant Utah Maggots tribe and they the team. They didn't have to do anything, you know? And he was able to just not like people wanted him out when they split the one with the, the vote tie between two, two, three and hamster. Did he get the vote? No, because there was no reason to ever vote Ollie out. And he was able to get to the merge with no harm done, you know? I believe he had one vote, and that was against Hamster, who went four to one. So it's not really that big of a deal. And he gets to the merge, and you know the merge is where Ollie. Um, I'm pretty sure at the final six is right when, uh, you know he was announcing that he couldn't uh, attend the session. You know that that uh he was probably he might. Like, I, I was like, oh man, Ollie's going to be expelled. I wanted this guy from All Stars. Why why does he have to why does he have to go like this? But uh. He ended up he ended up coming to the session anyway. He wasn't even on Discord, I don't think. He was just on Roblox. And it was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Revenge of the Island was one, is the weirdest season we ever hosted. But the fact that Ollie was able to survive that tiebreaker, not even on Discord, but on Roblox only, it, it was just it was just it was just nuts. He was able to beat Pink barely. They were both wearing the Scott outfit. Ollie's in the final five. But nobody ever wanted. But that's the thing. When, it, when it's total drama, it's not a jury vote. It's a challenge at the end. Ollie was not, you know, he was. He's referred to as the mobile legend. Like, why? Why would you vote out Ollie? You know, he, you can easily beat him in the final two challenge. And that's kind of what got him to the final three because, you know, at the final five, he, um, he he he, he and he got so mad at total. You know, Ollie was like, okay, Classic's gonna win this game if he gets to the end. His right hand man, who he probably wants to go to the end with, is freaking. So Ollie tries to get Dennis and Total together. Those three should have all voted freaking. For some reason, Total decides to vote Dennis. You know, why? We'll, we'll discuss that later. But, uh, you know, and, and then Ollie, before you know it, like, and then you look at the beginning, it's like, wait, you know, Final 13, you, you don't know where Ollie's going to be. Final 4, Ollie's there. And he's able to escape to the Final 3. Uh, and this is the weakest part of Ollie's game. That Final 4 vote was the weirdest thing i've ever seen in the long term like when classic was able to get total to go for dennis and ollie agreed and that's the thing total was the one who was um who was played in my opinion like i feel like people are gonna take it away from ollie just because he did that he had no choice because if total's going there and saying vote dennis Instead of voting classic, there's clearly something going on. Like, why would not you? Like, why wouldn't you vote Dennis? So that's what he had to do. And he was in the final three. And no matter what, he was either going to win the challenge, get to the end, or Total or Classic was going to win the challenge and take him to the end because clearly he's the weakest physically. That's exactly what happened. Classic took him to the end. And after a five minute challenge that happened today, uh, Ollie, um, Ollie pretty much got destroyed. I mean, it was kind of close. It kind of wasn't. You know, Ollie walks away as a second best player of the season and definitely an all-star by just how you know he was able to just never be seen and no he was never be seen and uh the reason he's a hero is because like i just said you never wanted ollie out he never really did anything villainous he always did the obvious and when he was targeted you know pre-merge like he wasn't a villainous about hamster you know hamster was going for him hamster was a villain in that case you know and uh ollie is the one who was able to play a very heroic game he was kind he was he was always he was always kind of in a position of power before maybe the final four at three but uh he was always also an underdog because he was always considered and he was able to get to the end with no blood on his hands he really didn't do anything villainous and that's why not only is he an all-star but he's definitely a hero so that's ollie right there yep ollie is the one someone who's able to like we said in our previous thing under the radar, but this time making moves. He's able to try to flip the votes, try to flip on people, and he's very socially aware. He's just aware of his game. He knows who's going to win the game. He knows who's the biggest threat, and he's able to get control of the situation and put votes on someone. You know, he was on the winning pre-merge tribe for most of them, only went to two tribals, and even in, I mean, two campfire ceremonies, even those two campfire ceremonies for the first one, he 
he gets three votes to cause a tiebreaker. Now, the tiebreaker didn't go his way, but if it did go his way, I think we have a different winner. And, you know, he's able to flip the votes while staying, keeping the target off him. And, you know, sometimes not winning challenges to get invincibility is a viable option. And, you know, Aldi wasn't that good at challenges, but that actually kept him more safe. You know, he was the leader of the flip votes on the freaking, onto, you know, the soul vote on Classic. He was able to get people to go on his side, such as Total, Pink when, he, when they got to merge, Dennis. And he knows what's happening. Hold up. I have to pause real quick. Accidentally. Yep. Yeah. Okay, there we go. You know, you can hear me, right? Yeah, I can. All right. I, uh, we're good, we're good, we're good. But yeah, Ollie was able to go through the pre-merge easily. Try to flip the votes, tiebreaker didn't go his way, now he yeah, just take a step them. back. What? Yeah, you're majorly cutting out right now. Alright, am I good? Oh, uh, no, not yet. No, you're not. Tell me when to get That's what I was confused by. I think I was lagging a little bit. Am I good now? Tell me when I'm good. I hope so. Oh, you're lagging. <laughs> Am I good? Am I good now? All right, tell me when I'm good. Uh... Who knows OBS connected, so I'll just say a good synopsis of it. Uh, yeah, sorry, stream, I had to pause it. So, yeah, Aldi is the one, is able to go through pre merge and try to flip the votes. Tiebreaker doesn't go his way. Luckily, he still has targets over him, so he just stays under the radar. Then at merge, he has a chance to flip the votes again. He gets total to soul vote, classic, classic gets rid of his super idol. Then he's able to. Get the votes onto freaking. Now, Total made a mistake in not voting freaking, but the tiebreaker finally went all his way, and he's able to get a big threat out of the game. Ollie was able to stay under the radar while making moves, and I think that makes him such a dangerous and good player. If you don't see him, he will come. If you're a big target, I'd watch out because this guy will be able to get you out if he has the numbers with him. And. I can see him going far as well, and I can't wait to see how he does in Total Drama All-Stars. If, if I like Gandalf, sure, but yeah. All right.
Yeah, freaking under the radar. And a lot of peanut gallery had as their winner pick. You know, this guy can win challenge. He showed it in this and Revenge Island. He is social. He can make connections. And, you know, his only real problem and the reason he lost was, you know, a tiebreaker that he could have won easily. It went, it could have went both ways easily. It was such a close tiebreaker, probably the closest in Ambition Lockdown's history. And, you know, it could have went both ways. Freaking could have won the game. He had a chance. And he is a dangerous player because he is a wild card for All-Stars. I don't think he'll be on a lot of people's radars. Now it's just up to him to make those social connections to get to all -Star, through All-Stars. And I think he will. And he is a dangerous player to, like, to get on because he has all, the, like I say, strategic social and physical and he has those on lockdown and he could potentially win all-stars and i can't wait to see him play oh yeah that's tyler watch this it's fine. Hey, pause yourself real quick. I believe we have a uh, talk. I'm just testing uh, OBS real quick. Ever since I paused it, uh, let me see. Technical difficulties real quick. Now, just talk about Tyler right now. As yeah, just continue as I'm. Okay. All right. So yeah, Tyler, Tyler's back. And uh, if you don't believe, if you don't think he was dominating that screaming there go. Screaming it's screen. Just yeah, continue. We're good. Okay. All right. Good. Um. Then why, when Kitty tried to flip on him, for being a, a being Tyler, uh, and the, the why did Kitty go home in a three to two vote over Tyler? Come on, Tyler dominated that team. Dominated physically during the pre-merge because the screaming gaffers never really even had to do anything. I mean, come on. Get to the merge, and Tyler is a huge underdog this season. You know, everyone wanted Tyler out. Probably the biggest underdog, well, easily the biggest underdog victory we've ever had. Even if he didn't win it, it would have been a, probably the biggest underdog story as well. Everyone wanted Tyler out. You know, it was a very kind of pagonging situation, it seemed. You know, Bezar, Soli, Captain, and Jalen, and then there was Tyler, Stolen Gem, and whoever else I'm forgetting. I don't know. Uh... Um, I believe it was Princess, actually. And, you know, Tyla... Uh, but but Tyla was able to, you know... Um, but th that's the thing. Tyla was going to go. You know, he was going to go. But Captain made a mistake. And that's kind of... That, that reason right there, that Captain made that mistake when telling Soli, like, you're, you're done, man, at the Final Four, that's really the only reason Tyla is our second weakest winner. But that just shows how great our winners are, I mean, because he played a great game, you know, an amazing winner, and, uh, you know, he had to win out in those fashion shows to the end, and he did a great job at that. He had way, way more dedication and total drum action than he ever did in Australian Outback, and 10 times more, more and, and uh, he was able to, you know, and then, you know, he was able to get with that. It was kind of like a hero-villain kind of duo, you know, after totally left his, you know, original alliance, it was Tyler and Sully, you know, working together. Tyler was the hero that keep had, had, had constantly had to, you know, survive these things. And Sully was the guy that just led him under his 
and started controlling. And Tyla, you know, at the final three, it's like, you know, it was, it was surprising. You know, at the final four, it was a finding challenge. Anyone could have gone, but at the final three, Tyla won the challenge, and he basically won the game right there, taking out Soli, you know. Soli didn't make a mistake, but sometimes the game just, just works like that, and the person you save wins. And uh, Tyla was able, able to, to, to decimate the stolen gem in that final two challenge. And, uh, you know, even if he got out the way he was supposed to, if Captain didn't, you know, screw up their game, he still would have been a great player of TDA. Would he have been an all-star? Probably not. But what he was able to do after Captain made that mistake, and because he, he did have to deal with a lot of bad luck in that merge. Nobody can control bad luck sometimes. And he was able to play, play dominantly as an underdog, and the biggest underdog in our history, and a huge underdog vic victory right there. Tyler Dahl, nine months in the, way, in the making. I can't, I can't believe he's back. I'm so excited to see how he can do. And he's such a hero because of that underdog victory. I think I basically already explained why he's a hero. Yep, Tyler Dahl. I mean, he went from an overdog in the pre-merge to an underdog at merge. You know, Tyler... I'm sorry, Tyler, but uh, I got news to you, man. <laughs> I kicked him, but... Uh, all right. Tyler Dull. He, you know, he comes to the pre-merge. Him and his ex-boyfriend were controlling the pre-merge. You know, he made alliances, and he was in control of the Screaming Gaffers. And at merge comes after he controlled the votes, he controlled everything, then comes merge. His team, besides the Stolen Gem, was decimated, you know, Baz played it. Also, we didn't talk about that with Baz. He got someone to flip Tyler's ex-boyfriend to actually send a screenshot and get expelled. So then after that, Tyler was on the bottom. After Authentic Vibes is uh, expelled and he's at the bottom. And, you know, it doesn't seem like there's a possibility for Tyler to make it to the end, especially with that big uh, majority alliance. Then, whether you want to call it Soli's move or Tyla's social game, you know, it was Soli's move.